What's going on guys? I'm up here at Grafton Archery. It's been a while. It is December 27th, two days after Christmas. I hope you and your families all had an amazing Christmas and a great holiday season. One thing that I want to start doing uh, on my videos, I want to bring you a verse of the day. And today's verse is uh, one that I came across in Proverbs that I thought was pretty cool and I thought it was kind of fitting to, uh, to what I'm all about. Uh, this is Proverbs 28, verse 1. It says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. I thought that verse was pretty cool. Think about that verse this week. I'm going to do some studying on that verse this week and try to figure out exactly what I think that verse is talking about. But I thought that, was verse, that verse was pretty cool, and I wanted to leave you all with that. So with that being said, you all know why I'm usually up here at the shop, and today is no different. And today's video is going to be all about the new Alpha X 33 from Hoyt. All right, guys, like I said, Alpha X 33. Uh, I've been super impressed with this bow. I shot this bow a while back whenever I was shooting all the other bows. I wanted to kind of shoot them all in a group so I could kind of judge off of each one. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I did get a um, decibel meter. I'm not sure if that's exactly what that's called, but it's a little meter that reads the noise coming off of these bows. With that being said, I haven't gotten it completely figured out yet. Um, I've shot a few of these bows beside of it. It really, really depends on how close I have that bow to the decibel meter. And it's just kind of, it's just kind of up and down. So what I really need to do is I really need to have somebody outside with me that can hold the meter or get right there and have that meter in the same spot every time and shoot all these bows. But one thing I will say is that when I'm talking about noise on these bows, generally speaking, it's just based on what I hear uh, from my own ear. Uh, and it's not, a, it's not an exact science. But I will say it does seem to be pretty directly correlated with speed. Uh, not one for one, but it does seem like the faster the bow, generally speaking, on that, chrono, on that decibel meter, the higher it peaks. So I definitely need to play with that a little bit. Um, and I'll talk about how quiet this bow is here in a minute. Before I get into what I think about this bow, let's talk about some of the specs um, that this bow has. So axle to axle 33 and 5 16 So it is a technically a 33 inch bow, but it's a little bit longer. Brace height, six and three eighths. Uh, I've been doing the actual weight, like holding this bow on a scale but everybody else seems to be doing that also. Um, and it almost seems to be like a redundant or, or wasted uh, metric. Um, so I'm just gonna start going off of what the bow manufacturers say. If I grab a hold of a bow that just feels super heavy or possibly super light, uh, I may weigh it in the back just to check it. Um, but so far, all the bows that I've weighed this year have been within what I would call tolerable. Uh, for what the bow manufacturers say they weigh. The other weird thing is they don't weigh these things with the little shorty stabilizer and all that other stuff on the bow. Um, so when I give you a weight, it's not really an accurate weight anyway based on what the manufacturers weigh on that. They weigh on bare bones and nothing on the bow. So they say, Hoyt say and this bow weighs, excuse me, 4.75 pounds. Draw weight availability is in 10 pound increments from 40 to 80. This bow is going to be adjustable with different limbs. It's not like the Matthews that has the adjustable mods for weight. It's still going to be adjusted by the limb. So make sure you know what bow you want when you order one because you're only going to get roughly a 10 or so pound uh, increase or decrease in weight. So like I said, 40 to 80 pounds. This bow is rated at 334. 
And Hoyt listened to all the uh, complaints and stuff from the last couple of years of just having two mod options. They now have three. And I'll get into why that's crucial here in a little bit because you'll see when, my, when I talk about my speeds, how that affects what I got. But this is available in 26 to 27 inch mod, which is your one. And then two is 27 and a quarter to 29. Three would be 29 and a quarter to 31. So this is something to keep in mind, guys, when you're trying to get the most um, speed and performance out of a bow. You want to try to be at the upper end of a mod selection. So like for myself, um, I'm often between a 27 and a 27 and a quarter, but it would be better for me to shoot 27 than 27 and a quarter for speed on this bow, this particular bow. So for somebody that's a 28 and a half inch draw, you would want to shoot the, t you'd be in the upper end of that two base, which would be good for you. You got 29 as the max, but the closer you can get to the top of that mod, the better performance you're going to get out of these bows. This cam is their new HPX Exact cam. They've kind of finally went away from the H HPX Pro cam. Let offs, this bow is going to be available in 75, 80, and 85% let off, and that's all adjustable on the mod. There's three adjustment spots for on this mod for let off, and there's also an adjustment spot on this mod for back wall, which is pretty sweet. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Comes in 14 color options, not to not including the options like this right here is gonna be your wilderness green and subalpine limbs. You can always mix match and stuff like that. There's just usually a different charge for that. Let's talk about some of the new technology on this bow and some of the things that you may notice between this year and last year's bows. Uh, you've got a new quiver mount. So the way the quiver mounts is uh, it mounts through the riser, but it only actually connects to the, the opposite side. So if it's a, if it's a right-handed uh, quiver, it actually mounts to the left-hand side of the bow. Uh, and this bow will come with the screws to make that work. Uh, and then you got a thinner grip. So the cool thing about this is it's not thinner, uh, it's not thinner width-wise, it's thinner thickness-wise. So when you feel this bow, you can actually feel uh, the difference in the grip I can. Uh, when you hold it up against last year's bows, you can see the difference in the grip. Um, so the actual rubber portion of the grip, I believe is the same, but I think they just took out some of the material on the front of the bow, uh, I think is what they're meaning by that. That's, at least that's what it feels like and looks like to me. They're saying a 10% reduction in vibration from last year's and a 30% reduction in sound. I would say that's pretty accurate. Um, these bows are a lot better as far as the vibration goes. They still have some, this bow still has some because of the, the long riser. Um, but this bow is super, super quiet. Um, the wire WRX strings and cables. So this is Hoyt's new string and cables. Uh, all their new bows are gonna come with these. This, so it's a whole new way that they're building their strings and cables. The verdict's gonna be out there, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have had any um, issues with these strings and cables for the ones that have these bows already, or if you guys love these things. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to see how they hold up and uh, how well these strings and cables are, because you know in the past, the few strings and cables have had some issues uh, and people haven't really liked them. These limbs have less flex, they're a shorter, wider, stiffer limb. Um, and that less flex, what Hoyt's saying is that actually uh, gives you a seven eighths of an inch more effective or more usable axle to axle. So these limbs, because they flex in less, your string angle and everything is gonna be similar to that of a bow that's three, uh, seven eighths of an inch longer in axle to axle length. Uh, quarter inch draw length adjustments. This is huge. Um, people have been asking for this. There's a lot of brands out there that offer this already, but Hoyt has not up until this point. They do now. So for guys like myself, maybe not in this particular bow, um, but some bows, I feel like I really need that quarter inch different um, draw length, and this bow would offer you that. Uh, this is the first year that Hoyt's ever had that quarter inch draw length adjustment, and I really, really like that feature. It's got three mods. Um, we just talked about that. Back wall adjustment, I talked about that. 
I don't know why you would want more of a spongy back wall, but it comes set in the stiff, the stiffer setting, uh, which is what I prefer. Some guys, maybe you like a, a more spongy back wall. It's not really that bad, but you can tell slight difference, um, but that's adjustable here on the mod. You've got a built-in cam foot. Guys, this is probably one of my favorite features about these new Hoyts. It's so small, but I'm always sitting my bow down to run my binoculars or to just take a break or sit there and chit chat. I'll sit my cam down and it's always in the dirt. Your stringing cable, your cam, everything's in the dirt. Well, with this new foot system, either way, if you do top or bottom, you can set your cam down and it's got a little rubber O-ring or gasket around that uh, little foot completely silent and it protects your cam. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool little feature there. Already talked about the wider limbs. And then lastly, the spacers. So this bow here is no different than the Hoyts in the past as far as tuning your cams back and forth. It's still a spacer system, but it comes with a lot better system this year. This year's system has three options uh, and they're color coded, gray, red, and black, I believe and or silver, silver, red, and black. Um, and those are aluminum. They're not plastic anymore. Thank you, Hoyt. I'm glad that they went that way. Uh, it still kind of stinks that you got to put your bow in the press, but like I always say, my personal preference and tunability is, is something that's not going to go anywhere when I'm in the field. So yes, you might have to put it in the press, but in my opinion, if you're adjusting on your bow, in that manner most of the time you're either already going to have a press or you're going to have a close relationship with a shop that allows you to work on your bow at the shop it's one of those things where most guys not all but most that are going to be that have the skill to work on their bows already have a press so i don't really consider that that bad of an issue um like I said, there are more tunable bows out there, but I do like that they simplified their system and went to three sets and they're color coded and they're aluminum. I like that. So that's pretty much it for the specs. So let's go ahead and shoot this bow a few times, let you see how it shoots for me and uh, give you an idea of what I like and dislike about the bow. So let's draw this thing back. That thing is so smooth. The back wall is stiff, not quite as stiff as the shorter bows, and that's to be expected. Let's see how bad, how good this bow balances back out. Bow balances well. Let's go ahead and let a shot off. A little bit of vibration, um, and it does kind of linger around a little bit. Not bad. Uh, it's kind of to be expected out of a longer axle to axle bow but it's not super bad. Right there, that's all the drop you got on the, on the back, on the uh, let off on the cam. So let's let that down. Let's see if it passes the let down test. Right there. Man, that bow's smooth. Like I said, great back wall. Once you put stuff on these bows, guys, the vibration is, it's almost a, mute, a moot point to an extent. Like if you have an excessive amount of vibration, then yes, it's an issue. But uh, all of these bows have a slight amount. This bow has just, like I said, a little bit more than the shorter bows. Let me really grip on it and feel it. Yeah, it definitely has a little bit more vibration. Uh, I would say probably middle of the road on vibration, but it is super quiet. Um, and I think that's more important really as a hunter than the vibration is. All right, let's get a couple more shots. I really like this color combo too. Right there. It's all you got on a drop, drop off right there. Pulling really hard on that back wall.
I can definitely tell a difference in the grip uh, this year versus last year. I like to take my hand and whether it's right or wrong, it's kept, I guess it's just kind of as long as you're consistent, but I like to take my hand and just put my hand on the front of that riser, uh, my fingertip right on the front of that riser and I can feel a difference in the thickness there. All right guys, so now that we've shot the bow a few times, I'm gonna go ahead and put my scores up on the board, how I scored this bow, and uh, we'll go from there and we'll get back with you here in just a second and talk about why I scored the things the way I did. All right, so for shootability, I've got this bow at a seven. Tunability, I've got this bow at a seven. Draw cycle is going to be a nine. This bow is super smooth. Uh, noise and vibration, I'm going to give this bow a seven. I'm going to fix my paper after I just shot that bow. I'm going to change my mind on that a little bit. Gave this bow a seven. Speed, giving this bow... I'm going to give this bow a seven because it is a little bit slower at the top end speeds. We'll talk about that, but... I'm almost hesitant to because I really like the fact that this bow is faster at my draw length than some of the other bows. Uh, for balance, let's see. Yeah, balance, giving this bow an eight. It balanced really well. Back wall, giving this bow an eight. Weight, I'm going to ding it a little bit. It's pretty heavy, giving this bow a six. And fit and finish, we're going to give this bow a nine. And then price, giving it a five. So that's going to be a total score of 73. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of this. So shootability, the riser on this bow is not as straight as a bunch of the others has got more reflex to it or deflex, however you want to call it, um, than a lot of some of the other brands do. It is a longer bow, like I said, 33 and 5 16, so I keep that uh, in there. And then the brace height is a little bit longer. It's not super long, but it is a little bit longer. I think this bow is going to be fairly shootable. I'm going to give it a seven. Tunability, um, I've already talked about the spacers, I've already talked about the quarter inch draw length adjustments, the addition of a, a third mod option, which helps there. Uh, and then having that back wall and um, let off adjustment all in the same mod, that is very, very nice. Uh, I'll get dinged a lot on why I like cert uh, certain types of tunability and the fact that I like more of a simple system. A lot of guys don't like that but I am gonna give this bow a seven. I think it's an upgrade from the last version that Hoyt had on the HVX Pro Cams. Draw cycle, this bow is extremely smooth, no stacking, great back wall. I really like this draw cycle, so I'm gonna give it a nine. Noise and vibration, like I said, it does have more vibration than the shorter bows, but with that being said, add a stabilizer, your sight and quiver to this bow, you're not gonna notice the vibration. Uh, noise wise, I actually think this bow might be quieter than the shorter bows. I kind of shot it with the little decibel meter that I bought, uh, and it consistently showed that this bow was quieter. Uh, to the naked ear, I really, really couldn't tell, so it's that close. Uh, but I'm gonna give this bow a seven on noise and vibration. Speed, I'm gonna give this bow a seven. While I've got speed on my mind, let's talk about what I got. So. 27 inch draw, once again, I always shoot the 350, 425, and 513 grain arrows. That seems to be a pretty good range of arrow weights. So at 27 inch draw, 70 pounds, I got 299, 275, and 250. 30 inch draw, I got 321, 295, and 271. So at 30 inches, this bow shot slower than some of the other bows that I've tested this year. But at 27 inches, this bow shot faster than several of the bows that I tested this year. And I think the reason for that is 
with my draw length, I am at the top end of their number one base mod. At 30, you're not quite at the top end of their three base mod. I think that's the difference in speed there. Uh, so keep that in mind if you are a shorter draw length guy, check out what your draw length, how your draw length is gonna lay out on their mod system and that will really help you kind of make a decision on uh, is it gonna be a slower or faster bow for me and is that something that I'm even worried about? So that's what I got for speeds. Um, so like I said, I gave the bow a seven. If it was just based on my draw length, I would give that bow, I would probably give the bow an eight, but because it's based on all ranges of draw length, we're giving it a seven. The bow balanced really well in my hand. I like the way this bow feels. I'm giving it an eight. Back wall, giving it an eight. I've already talked about how stiff and great the back wall is. This is Hoyt's best year of, their, of back wall that I can remember. Um, maybe not ever, but as far as I can remember since like the 2012 time frame, this has been my favorite back wall yet. Weight, this bow is heavy um, compared to other bows in this class, especially the new Matthews. So we're giving it a seven. Fit and finish, giving it a nine. These bows look amazing. They're great. I love the uh, textured finish on these bows and the colors are awesome. Haven't had any finish issues in a while. And then for price, giving this bow a five because this bow I'm, I'm pretty sure is selling here for $12.49, I think. So giving this bow a five on price, like I said, total of 73 points. So like I said, guys, I really like this bow. I think for guys that are around my draw length, this may be a great option if you like a little bit longer axle to axle bow. Also for guys with a longer draw length, this may be a great option, something that goes up to 31 inches, but not as high as say 32 or 32 and a half inches. So if you're just a little bit above, you know, that 30 inch draw length, uh, this may be a great option for you. Um, yeah, like I said, great bow. I really like the way it shoots. Uh, it's definitely a top contender for my new bow for this year. Uh, don't know yet what I'm going to shoot, but I am really liking this bow and I'm going to continue to shoot them and shoot them and shoot them. And I still have several other brands to shoot before I make my decision, but this is definitely going to be a top contender. So if you're in the market for a new bow, come check these bows out. The Hoyt Alpha X 33. Come up here to Grafton Archery. Let those guys help you out. If you have any questions, give them a call at 704-855-1300. And if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to comment down below. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. If you like what you're watching, comment. Please comment down below and let me know that you like what you're seeing. If you don't like what you're seeing, just be tasteful with it, guys. I'm always up for some constructive criticism, but just don't be a butthole about it. Some of these guys are, are women, guys, whoever. Some of the comments they leave are uh, pretty mean. So. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional. I have a full-time job outside of archery. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're commenting down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. And we'll catch you on the next one.